It's beautiful. Kudriyash, isn't it glorious? 50 years, Kudriyash. I've looked at the on the Volga and every day it looks more wonderful than before. I suppose it is. Look at it, Kudriyash. Look at it. It's a song, a poem, a picture. It thrills me with delight. It's all right. Haven't you got eyes? Haven't you a soul? Can't you see the color and the pattern in the valley and on the hills? Can't you hear the music of the river? Don't you feel the beauty, the unsp unspeakable beauty of it all? We're not all alike you. We're not all like you. We're not all up in the clouds. If my head is in the clouds, that's as it should be. But my feet are on earth, the earth. I'm a watchmaker and self-taught to remember that, Kudriyash, a self-taught watchmaker. Yes, yes. Who is that over yonder waving his arms about? That'll be Dikue, and he's raving at Boris G Grigor Grigorovich as usual. His nephew? What for? The boy seems innocent enough. That's as may be. Makes no difference. Decoy is always bullying somebody. He'll, he'll go for, for, to find a, a bigger bully than he is. There's no pleasing him. It's certain Boris Gregorovich hasn't much of a life. Our worthy Decoy isn't the only tyrant in this town. Why can't people live and let live? Martha Krabanova likes her own way, too. She has a reputation for piety, her austere life. That's so, but how much is it worth? Decoy is a tyrant. He spreads terror wherever he goes. Everybody cringes when they see him coming. It's a pity there are not more fellows like me. Then we'd soon put a stop to his bullying. We'd teach him better manners. How? How? If there were only more spirit among us, he'd sing a different tune. What would you do? Stop him in a quiet place and then pick a quarrel with him. That would be easy enough. If there were a half dozen of us, we could give him something to remember. Drive the lesson home through his thick skin and he'd go home like a whipped dog. You may be sure he'd keep it to himself. I can see now why he wanted you to go into the army. He can't do as he likes with me. He won't eat humble pie. I'm not that sort. Doesn't he swear at you? What if he does? He can't open his mouth without an oath. But that doesn't frighten me. I give him as good as he gives me. How? There's a good imitation of a bazaar when we are at it. At, when we are at it. Well, why do you suppose he keeps me on it as, as his clerk? I, I know too much. It would be inconvenient to turn me off. Do you mean that you do things to be ashamed of? Then you have no self-respect. Listen to him now. If you must preach, take your sermons to decoy. I wish his daughters were not so young, if they were only old enough to flirt with. Well, what of it? You'd see what you'd see. A pretty game I'd play, to be sure. That would be a fine card, wouldn't it? I'm a devil with the girls. Don't let us stay here. If he meets us, he is sure to start swearing. Damn you. Have you nothing to do? I never see you, but you are stargazing. Uh, here I find you hanging around like an idle rogue, like a beggar, tapping windows for hot copics. But, sir, today is a holiday. Don't talk to me about holidays. What do you want with holidays? I'd like to know. Holidays be damned. There's plenty to do if you'd only do it, and why the devil do you get in my way? I've told you before, and I tell you again, keep out of my sight, do you hear? Say something, Dalt. There's nothing to say. Nothing to say. To the depths of hell with you, haven't you a tongue? What do you mean you'd find work if you'd worked for it, if you looked for it? What do you want me to do? Get out of my sight. I won't waste words on such a fool. God in heaven, I can hardly keep my hands off you. This fellow is always under my nose. Why do you allow him to treat you like that? He's intolerable. I cannot understand why you live under his roof. 
It is not my wish, Culligan. I cannot help myself. Do you mean you aren't free? How is it that he has no much... He, he has so much hold over you. He is my uncle, and under Grandmama's will, he is our guardian. You knew my Grandmama. I remember her distinctly. She wasn't the sort one forgets. She never forgave my daughter for his wedding. That is why he went to live in Moscow. Dada's people were so rude and uncouth that Mama could only visit them occasionally and stay a few days at a time. She was of a gentle birth and had been differently educated. Then it must have been almost unbearable. Ours was a cultured home with books and pictures, and we were all very happy. My sister and I both went to good schools, and it was while we were there that an outbreak of cholera carried off both our parents and left us orphans. Then when Grandmama died, she left a will in our favor. I am glad of that. But there was one condition. There would be. What was the condition? That we show dutiful respect and obedience to our uncle Savil Prokofievich Dekoy, merchant of Kalinov. Then I am afraid, sir, the condition is impossible. No matter how I try, he makes an excuse for high words. I can do nothing to please him. And if he does give us a ruble or two, he carries it as if it were a great sum. And that's that he's never done talking about. My sister lives with my mother's relatives. I couldn't think of her coming here. No good would come of that. Has he given you any settled allowance? No, and it's impossible to discuss it with him. That's true enough. Nobody can get money out of him. The word salary sets him swearing for hours. I'll, I'll pray you what I, what I think fit. He says, I may be inclined to give, what, give you more if you, don't ask, if you didn't ask me, but I won't be asked, and all the time you know he never will give it you. But surely, sir, there are times when he is reasonable. We don't notice them. He has a vile temper and flares up at, at, at nothing. You should see him in, in the bazaar, thief, scoundrel. He will storm at some poor peasant. Do you think I'll pay that? And he will spit and throw down less than cost price. That's all you'll get from me. There's nobody, there's nobody dares to answer him. There was one down on the landing stage by the ferry. He was an officer. Didn't he put him in his place, too? Oh, ho, de Goy met more than his match that day. It was great fun to see the pig squeal. He was dreadful at home, storming and raving for days. We didn't even show our faces. He's always worse than, than when, he's, when he's been crossed. The service is over. The people are coming back from church. Come on, Shapkin. Let us have a drink together. I don't know how I can bear it much longer, Culligan. It's so different from the life I've been used to. Here I am, so lonely. Though I am Russian, it's as if the boys of my age spoke a different language. They do not understand me, and I do not understand them. There is nothing we can share together. Why is it, Culligan? It's because the folks have never had a chance. It's their misfortune, not their fault. They are so ignorant, so brutal, so animal. They've never known anything but grinding poverty. Poverty crushes everything that is lovely into the mud. There's no dignity in their work either, no interest. The peasants are to be pitied, and it is the like of your uncle should be blamed. All he thinks about is what he can get out of them, not what he can do for them. There's no idea of service, and the authorities are no better. If a poor peasant complains to the governor, do you think he gets satisfaction? The governor and Decoy Hobnob together and slap each other on the back. Your uncle will argue, what if I do pay them a kopeck or two short? It's nothing to them, but it mounts up a lot to me when I have hundreds of these rascals to deal with. And it goes on. Greed. Greed. The peasants copy their masters and cheat each other. And not a thought above money and the malicious pleasure of taking a mean advantage over each other. And yet you endure it so patiently. Because I understand. I did try to put it down in poetry once. Do you write poetry? <laughs> in my way, sir, I, and I read the poets. Lamentov I like best of all. He was a true son of the soil and a thinker, too. You should write about these things that mean so much to you. 
The people of Kalinov would not think me for, thank me for it. They drive me out of the town with whips. They might even kill me. As it, as it is, I have to suffer for my plain speaking. I could tell you much more about their family life. Ah, oh, my dear. We are very fortunate. Very fortunate. The people here are so kind, so generous, so good. It makes the heart warm to think there, there are such nice, dear people as the merchant gentry. They are such an example to, and so pious. In all my travels, I have never seen such a beautiful characters. Madame Cabanova, she is full of human kindness. She gives alms to the poor. Cabanova? Madame Cabanova, a two-faced hypocrite, sir. She is kind to the poor and harsh to her own family. But I must be going. I am working at a great pro I am working at a great problem. What problem? Well, a mechanical one? Not mechanical, but a problem in mechanics. I, I shall solve it yet. And when I've worked it out, it will bring in thousands. There will be offers from other countries for it. Why, they are waiting to buy it. Then I can put my ideas into practice. I can improve the town and provide honorable work. What wonderful invention is this? If only I could afford to buy the models I need, then I should have solved the secret. What secret? The secret of the stars um, and the sea. Uh, the secret of life, my friend, perpetual motion. Good day, sir. <laughs> what a dear, good-hearted soul he is. <laughs> Let him go on attempting the impossible. Let him keep his dreams, but where are mine? All the joy, all the fancies and gentle thoughts, all, all the spirit of my boyhood has been stamped out of me. <sighs> and in my misery, in my despair... Just when everything seems utterly hopeless. What should I do but fall in love? <laughs> it is madness, and yet I am helpless. Her face is the only lovely light in my darkness. Yet I may never speak to her. I can only look from a distance. Here she comes with her husband and his sister and Madame Kabanova. I'll wait to kind of catch a glimpse of her and then hurry away. You know that your mother always speaks for your good. That when you get there, you will do exactly as I tell you. Mama, I always try to do that. I am not so sure about it. You young people show little respect to your elders these days. You cannot accuse me, Mama, of disobeying you. If children only remembered what we suffer to bring them into the world, what sacrifices we make, what anxious hours we spend thinking of their welfare. But, Mama, if you ever thought of these things, there would be less chatter about independence. You wouldn't take offense at if by chance I should say a word. But, Mama, I assure you, I know I'm only an old woman, and perhaps I'm foolish at times, but you must bear with me. But, Mama, I should never think. You are a good son, and if I seem hard, it is because I love you. I've brought you up on strict principles and taught you the virtues of obedience and reverence. Some of the young folk nowadays are too free. They go about saying, I will, do, I will not do as I'm told. If a daughter-in-law is given a word of advice... And it's all over the town that her mother-in-law is ruining her married life. Do you mean that people are talking about you, Mama? I haven't said so. I haven't even thought it. I couldn't talk like this if I had thought it. No, my son, we must never ascribe wickedness to others. We are all sinful. And if people do talk, we must suffer their malice and patience. They'd never dare. By God, I... Shh! You must not swear. It has been plain to me for some time that you love your wife better than your mother. Your love for me has quite changed. No, Mama, nothing is different. It's all different. I can't tell you just how, but I feel it in my heart. Something in you has gone cold. Perhaps it is your wife who is doing it. Perhaps she is killing your love. No, no, Mama, it's all wrong. I love you just the same. Tian does love you. And I've always been a dutiful daughter to you. Who spoke to you? 
You speak when you're spoken to. Let me tell you, Tython, Tion is my son, and he doesn't want any speeches from, from you to help him. Can't I talk to my own boy now without your interference? You are always ready to flare up and create a scene out of nothing, just to impress people. She must have her say. That's unkind of you, Mama. And you know it isn't so. I, I don't make scenes. You needn't be so hoity-toity. I never meant to discuss you at all. It just happened. Anyhow, there was no occasion to say that of me. Just listen to her. Listen to the way she talks to me, the impudent, impudent creature. Well, you might at least be just if you can't be kind. I've found you out. I've got eyes, and you may not like what I say, but you are too fond of your own way. And there'll be, and there'll never be any peace in this house while you are so willful. It won't be long before I'm gone, and when I'm dead, the, then you, you'll miss me. Maybe then you'll be sorry for all these sinful tempers. Mama, dear, I never forget you in my prayers. I ask Christ's blessing on you always. Perhaps you do. But you don't love me the same now. You've got a young wife. You only love her. I love you too, Mama. I can't explain the difference. You can't compare the two. We can soon test it. Would you rather give up your mother or your wife? Tell me that. I can't tell you that. I don't want to lose either. What's the good of words? Isn't it plain enough? You didn't even answer the question. Mama, you know I have no will but yours. How can I answer that question? Don't whine. How can you expect your wife to obey you, to be afraid of you, if you behave like this? Why should she obey me? Can't we give and take? It doesn't matter so long as she loves me. What are you talking about? All this nonsense about love. Haven't you got over that yet? If she doesn't obey you, how can I expect her to obey me? A pretty state of affairs there would be in this house if there's nobody at the head of it. She's your wife, isn't she? She promised to, to obey, didn't she? Or does the marriage sacrament mean nothing to you? And you talk like that before your young sister, too. If she gets these ideas into her head, her husband, when she gets married, will have something to thank you for. You see what a fool you are. Your way is anarchy. There'd be no order anywhere. And you, with so little sense, dare to think about being independent. Mama, you know I never think at all. I just want to be content. Do you? And you think that all you need is soft words and kisses. You wait. What do you mean, Mama? You don't want her to be afraid of you. You want her to have all her own way. And if she wants a lover, what are you saying? You must have everything she wants. What's the use of talk, take, talking to such an idiot? I'm going home. Are you coming? It won't be long. I'll just take a stroll down by the Volga. Do as you please, only don't stop long. Nothing annoys me like waiting. It's always the same. Mama is always nagging me because of you. I can't help it. Well, what am I to do? You'll do nothing anyway. Before we were married, she never left me alone. She was always on at me. She said she wanted to see me married and settled down, said it was time I got a wife, and now, well, you see how it is. You've got no spirit. You've only a yes and no to, to everything she says. Why don't you speak up for yourself? You would if you loved Katerina, as you say you do. <laughs> well, tell me what I can do. I haven't a will of my own. I know what you want to do. It's easy to see that. You want to go to the inn to drink with decoy. Right. Quite right. Don't stay long, Tian. Will you, dear? There's been enough trouble already. We don't want to anger your mama any further. <laughs> no, you'd better hurry up. If you drink less, maybe you'd be more of a more man. You know how mama will be if you're late. I should say I did know. Wait for me. Don't go home without me. I'll be back soon. You always take my part. Poor Katya. Why Why do you? Because I love you, of course. Oh, Varya, I, I am so glad of that. And, and I love you. Sometimes I wish... What do you wish? It's silly, I know, but I can't help it. If only I were a bird. If only I could... 
beat my way out of this cage. Yes, yes, I understand. I'd spread my wings so, and I'd so soon away up into the free, bright air, and I'd never be caught again. Watch me, Varya. Watch me. Whatever are you playing at, Katya? That's how we used to play when we were children. But I never play now. I never feel I can play. Ever since I came to Kabanova's house, I seem to be all withering up here. How you've changed. I had such a lovely time as, as it, when I was a child. Shall I tell you about them, Varya? Mama loved me so much, and I never had anything to do but play and dream. In the summertime, when the sun shone warm, I used to go down to the spring and splash in the sparkling water. And then I'd water the flowers, too, and they seemed to lift up their thirsty head and say thank you for the drink. Then Mama and I would go to church, and there we'd kneel and say our prayers. And the pilgrim women would come home with us after the service and tell us all sorts of wonderful stories. We'd all sit around and listen. Sometimes they would sing songs, too. And when they were sewing or doing basket work or perhaps sleeping, I'd run out and play, play at fairies or pretend I was a princess and go to meet my lover. Those are the happiest days for all of us. I used to one wander in the garden just before bedtime, when the flowers were nodding good night and the birds were singing their vespers, and I'd kneel down and pray. I don't know what I prayed for because I was too happy to want anything. And then in bed, I'd make up dreams, all about beautiful temples with white walls and golden domes sparkling in the suns and wonderful gardens scented in the dusk with peaceful water shining like silver and straight tall trees pointing up to the stars just like you see in the holy pictures Varya and music came singing through my dreams far lovelier than the pilgrim songs like a choir of angels there was nothing dragging me down then. Don't you dream now? Only sometimes, but I'm afraid of them now. Why are you afraid? Because they tell me I'm going to die soon. Don't be so foolish. I can't explain it. It is as if some power had got within me, some evil power, and it's dragging me. Oh, I can't tell you. What is it, Katerina? What is it that has got hold of you? It is some sin in my heart, something I cannot understand, and it's forcing me against my will. Oh, Varya, I am terrified. I have nothing to hold on to, nothing, and it's dragging me to the top of the cliffs. It's going to push me over. You're ill or something. There's no good will come of talking like this. But I'm not ill. I'm not ill at all. It isn't as if I wanted these thoughts to come, but they do, and they make me blush with shame. They come to me in the night, and they persuade me to listen. It's like a voice trembling in my ear, asking me to answer, not the music I heard when I was a child, but a deep calling voice. And then I feel strong, warm hands holding me, caressing me, and I do not resist. They, they are leading me, I know not where, and I go with him. I go with him. And why not? What am I doing talking like this to a child like you? It's only a dream, anyway. That, that's nothing. I've done worse than dream. You can tell me. How can I tell you? It's sinful. If I were only free again, I'd run away from the suffocating life. We'd take a boat and sail down the Volga, sail into that dreaming sunset. But not with your husband. What makes you say that? It's true, isn't it? Oh, Varya. What am I to do? I can't escape it, and I've tried so hard. I've prayed and wept, and yet the sinful thoughts keep stirring within me. 
I try to think only of Dion, but it's no use. It is another I think of. It's no use being miserable over it. I'm not, though I've sinned enough, nobody need know. But it's so wicked, Varya. I shall do away with myself soon if something doesn't happen. You mustn't talk like that. We'll do something. Tian is going off tomorrow, and you'll be alone. Then perhaps you can meet him. The other you think of. No, no, I, I can't meet him. Of course you can. No, if I, if I once met him, I should never, never come back. Of course you would. Well, we'll do something about it. Don't do anything. Do you hear? Nothing. Nothing. If you go on like this, you will die soon. And do you think anybody will shed tears over you? Come now, Katya. What's the use of tormenting yourself? There's no good can come of it. Pretty ladies. Two pretty ladies, eh? And what are you doing? For whom are you waiting? Lovers, no doubt. Young gallants are coming soon, and that's why you're here. Beware, your hearts are singing to a mad tune. They will beat to a sad one yet. Your eyes are full of inv invitations. They will invite the devil. You are beautiful, you think. Well, where will beauty take you? There, to the green, swirling depths of perdition. Laugh, laugh. There's laughter, much laughter in hell. There you will burn in eternal damnation. Burn, burn, that's the end of beauty. It's a prophecy, Varya, a prophecy for me. I know it's for me. I'm terrified. I'm shaking all over. The old hag, that's what she is. An old hag. You heard what she said. Don't take any notice of her. Nobody does. She talks that way to everybody she meets. It's because she's been such a wicked woman all her life that now she's terrified of uh, to die herself. And so she tries to scare everybody else. When the children see her, they hide round corners and she shakes her stick at them. You'll all burn in hell, burn, burn. Don't, don't, you, you mustn't mock her. She's an old fool, don't be afraid of her. I can't help it. Why doesn't Tian come? He's had time for many drinks and I'm sure she's going to be a storm. A storm. Let's go. Let's go home now. Without Tian. You can't go home without him. You know that. I don't care. We must go home now. We must go. There's no reason to be alarmed. The storm is far away. Very well. We'll wait a little. But do, but I do want to get home. You are no better off than there than here if there's a storm. Yes, we are. We can kiss the icon and say our prayers. Why are you afraid of a storm? I don't mind. It seems silly to be so frightened. I shouldn't be afraid. Only I'm so wicked. It's the fear that we may be killed, and I should have to face God with all those guilty thoughts I've confessed to you. Oh, what terrible things I've said. What sin is in my soul? Come along, brother. Do hurry. The storm will be here soon. Let us run, Tian. Run.